Hello everybody and welcome to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Marcin Nimsch Filipovic and I'm here with Alexander Raven Baguli. And we are starting with day four. This is Group D and uh, straight away into a Skaka Tice match. Raven, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm doing really good. Really up for this group. Um, another like just, you know, Titan group, really. Just uh, like all the players in this tournament so far. But it is going to start with Tice versus Oskaka. Um, uh, it looks like Tice is going to be playing Zulok, whereas Oskaka is also on Warlock. Just can't quite tell which version it is just yet. Yeah, and I want to um, just look at those production improvements. We can see the classes on the overlay, and then we had some fun with flags. So uh, we actually have the, I think the name switched. So th this might be confusing for a moment, but we'll probably just fix it in, in just a moment. So Tice, um, we, because the classes are the same, we don't know who is where, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that because um, Oskaka and like, you know, Navi Oskaka is on the top, I think that actually is Oskaka on the, I'm going by the names here. So, uh, Tice is on the bottom and Oskaka is on the top, as far as I'm aware. Oh, that's my uh, that's my go-to anyway. But uh, but yeah, we'll see how the game goes. I'll get fixed soon, um, and then we'll just carry on. It looks like both players are playing Zoo, though. Yeah, so um, Zoo, we discussed it during the, the last couple of days, but the deck is getting more and more popular among the pro players because it's so stable. And uh, what are the best parts about this deck, Raven, in your opinion? Yeah, so as you said, um, how stable it is, it curves out normally at, at 5, which is your Doom Guards and Lothair, potentially. Um, but the best bits about the deck in general is the ability to trade up or burst, because you run cards like Double Power Overwhelming. As we can see in Oskaka's hand, Double Dark Peddler, which can give you cards like Power Overwhelming, Abusive Sergeants, Argus, so on, so on. So you've always got the board, due to cards like Egg, Implosion, things like that we can see in Tice's hand. And then you always have the ability to trade these tokens up with all the buffs and additional minions. So really strong deck that can, in all honesty, just steamroll. And in the mirror, I think it, this game's going to go very sort of board control heavy and they're just going to battle for that board. And once one side gets a little bit too big, then that's when the game will really quicken up and probably yeah, end pretty soon after that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And the, and the key cards here will be though those Dark Peddlers giving something to Oskaka to make a tempo play. And that implosion from, from Tice, if it hits a big target and gets a, a correct number, that will be really good for, for Tice. But now, a decision, do we go for Nerubian Egg or Knife Juggler? Um, both cards will be protected um, by, by the Void Quarter. So basically, if he goes for Juggler, he can prepare for Imp Gangboss next turn. And then if Juggler somehow survives, the implosion will be really good. Yeah, I think the thing here is is that um, Egg is always nice to just get on the board, but Tice currently doesn't have an activator, right? So there's that side, and then the juggler is normally a bit risky to just drop down, but as you said, with the Voidwalker, making this juggler pretty safe, there's not too much that can actually kill this guy uh, on the following turn from Oskaka. means like the juggler just wins out in the potential there. If if Tice had like an abusive sergeant, then we probably would have seen the Egg played in, uh, instead. Absolutely, and, and just to uh, tell a couple of words about the, those players, we have the world champion versus the European champion, and this is the match that we've seen at uh, BlizzCon as well. Yeah, just a pretty huge match, and this was actually deemed, I think, across the board as probably the overall best set from BlizzCon. Uh, Oskaka versus Tice. It was, it was a really good set. And um, and yeah, we just at it again with these guys. And this is one of the first sort of bigger tournaments of the year so far. So really good to see Oskaka, you know, straight in there. Let's, you know, see how the world champion starts his uh, his first year with that title. Absolutely. And he brought the, the rogue deck that the, that was really good for him in the, in the finals as well. Yeah, we've seen a few players bring Rogue. I mean, we've seen uh, Orange and Live Coach yesterday bring it. Two slightly different variants. And uh, you know, Orange just doing a little bit better overall with that Rogue, but yeah, it's gonna be uh, gonna be good to see how the lineups go. Uh, Ty Spring and his sort of trademark Druid, I think that's pretty confirmed as his favorite class overall. So nice to see these guys bring their own, you know, sort of favorite decks. Yeah. Okay, so for now, for Ty's uh, situation is quite good. Uh, he will need to hit with uh, one of the knives into into a minion, and then he will be able to continue protecting his his juggler. Yeah, who do you think's got the uh, like the, the advantage so far? I think Tice is looking really strong purely because of that implosion in hand. But on the on the other side, Oskaka does have the power overwhelming. Dark Iron Dwarfs a pretty big impactful card, and the Doom Guard because Zoo doesn't actually have a good way to deal with the Doom Guard a lot of the time. 
I think at the moment, Thais is far ahead, because normally Zoo doesn't have a lot of clear potential, so you do fight for the minions, and one of the best spells to kind of come back in a situation where we are behind is Implosion, which Oskaka doesn't have. Thais is an Implosion, and what's even more important is that at the moment Oskaka doesn't have a way to get into that Knife Juggler, so whatever he plays will be a good target for Implosion, like even if he goes for Imp Gangos, that's still a good Implosion target, and, and so many Knives can fly just to seal the game almost, giving uh, a Thais a full board. Yeah, and the thing as well is on top of Implosion, his own Gang Boss can actually, once that trades, it generates a token which will then proc another knife. So it is, is going to be a little bit rough for Oskaka, I think, to deal with this. And all on the back of him not having a way to get through this Voidwalker quick enough. Absolutely. And I think he even didn't get the good cards from the Dark Peddlers. Corruption uh, might be useful for cards like a Doom Garden opposing side or a Sea Giant that you can't deal with. But it's a bit slow, especially in this in the zoo matchup. Yeah, I mean, even if he you know dropped the corruption onto the juggler there just to finally kill it off at some point, uh, it would have affected the ability for Oskaka to get the imp gang boss down. And now uh, Tais has an interesting one. It does look like it's going to be the implosion onto the gang boss. He did have a few options, but as we you know for the reasons we just said, like implosion feels pretty damn good here. And he hits. Um enough let's say like he, he really wanted to uh, hit a couple of minions not going for phase with the juggles and with this uh, he has a good way to to deal with this board like i, I think even attacking to that imp uh, makes a lot of sense because in a way this protects the knife juggler you can expect a moral coil coming from Oskaka after double dark peddler but we know there is nothing like that yeah and the thing as well is like the reason the attack's really good is that zoo doesn't really have anything from hand that can actually just deal direct damage a lot of time. There, there pretty much only is Implosion in the deck that can... Uh, implosion and a Doom Guard, I suppose, but we're not quite in the Doom Guard uh, turn yet. So even, you know, leaving the Juggler, like you said, on one health is completely fine. And he has so many good options next turn. He can drop Flame Imp into Argus. He can just drop Flame Imp Egg, set up Argus for the following turn. You know, Tice is in such strong control of this match. This is exactly what Zoo wants, uh, being uh, at the Tice spot. You want to apply pressure in a way that you clear always the board from your opponent and with the leftover minions that that still are on the board you attack face a bit every turn but always try to maintain that uh, huge board position uh yeah 100 percent. and um th this is just tyson just has all the options in the world here it's uh, the argus is hovering over now he's got double juggler if he wants it i mean there's so many options that i don't even know where to start um he does look like he's going to go for the second juggle. He gets a good hit onto the Void Walker. That's pretty nice. Yeah, this, the question is how to clear the Imp Gangboss without, without actually clearing the whole board, even though it's going to summon uh, some, some Imps. Yeah, this is fine. I mean, you're pretty reliant on the juggler being able to deal with any Imps uh, that come out along with the tokens. Uh, and he does have many, many more juggles yet as he drops the egg and then go, it can go into Flame Imp as well. And, you know, Tyson on 30 health, no reason not to drop the Flame Imp. It's not exactly going to put you within lethal range of that uh, self-damage. Oh, man. Just having a full board. Is there any card that Oskaka can use here to, to gain advantage? I don't think so. Like, as you mentioned, there is not that many cards that can interact with this board, being a Zoo player. And uh, already there is uh, so much power as well. 8, 11 damage. And with um, Fender of Argus... If there's a minion that uh, Oskaka plays and Tice can uh, trade into it with one of the imps, he'll be able to play Defender of Argus and increase the power on board even more. So yeah, and the problem is, like, what does Oskaka do? Does he he needs to kill the juggler? Does he doom guard into the juggler? Like, that seems terrible. Um, but there's not a lot else. Owl doesn't do too much. He can owl off the egg, but bear in mind, like, it, without killing the egg, it's still, uh, you know, a target to, say, like, Power Overwhelming or something. So, you know, it's still on the board and uh, it has some potential. He did just throw the, uh, the silence as well, so that's definitely not coming down now. There's something important also to mention about the Zoo deck overall. I think Zoo is one of the most uh, position-heavy decks, and uh, Thais positioned his minions in a way that uh, the Imps spawn on the right side of the uh, of the gang boss, and then he also gave himself a chance to defend of Argus both Nerubian Egg and uh, the Flame Imp if he needs to deal for damage um, with one with one attack. Uh, he goes for Defender, um, buffing the two important minions here, getting the 4-4, and still having a lot of small stuff on board.
Yeah, and I really like this as well, because what he did there was um, he would have put uh, buff the imp gang boss to push for more damage, but because the trade was so good, he decided to buff uh, the... Sorry, he could have buffed the flame imp, but then he went for the buffing the imp gang boss, because then that's an additional potential two tokens instead of one. So, you know, he's just getting more and more value out of these minions. And in all honesty, I don't even know what Skaka could potentially draw to get out of this game, and that's going to be the end, as Kaka agrees. Yeah, so Tyus takes uh, game number one, Zul versus Zul versus Kaka. And, uh, yeah. well, uh, Raven, this is day four, uh, Group D, and we had three amazing days before. Can you give me a quick summary of what happened? Yeah, so uh, the first day we had Group A, which was Stan, Skif uh, Stan Sifka, sorry, Sixo, Kalento, and Dog, and Sifka and uh, Sixo did go through to that group, so they'll be in the top eight. Uh, group B, we had Pavel, Ecop, Hoy, and RDU with Pavel and Ecop going through. So a little bit of a surprise there, you know, with the likes of RDU and, and Toy as well. You know, a little bit of a surprise, but again, all four players are super strong anyway. And then yesterday we had Group C, which was Show, Orange, Strife, Coach, Life Coach, where Show actually went through at the top of the group by coming back from being 0-2 down twice, <laughs> yeah. which was pretty impressive and pretty crazy. And then today we have Group D, which is Oskaka and Tice, as we can see. And then we have Hannibal Z2 and Tides of Time coming up next. So a very interesting group of champions with World Champion, then uh, Dreamhack Champion and uh, European Champion, and Hannibal Z being the Dreamhack Cruz Napoca Champion and Tides of Time uh, being, well, the champion. He, he, he won a lot of tournaments. The people's champion. People's champion. <laughs> Coming back. Yeah. <laughs> so in this game now, Tice has gone over to his Druid. And um, again, probably his, his favorite class. And uh, Oskaka's kept with his Warlock, uh, which is going to be a pretty good matchup for Oskaka, I think. I think, you know, the last game went quite rough. And uh, with this matchup specifically, Oskaka can really cash in on that, uh, the, the, how favored Zoo is versus Druid. Yeah, absolutely. And um, But there are ways to deal with the Zoo as a Druid if you get a really good opening with Wild Grove and then innervate into something like Shredder or Keeper of the Grove. So if you get that early start and ramp, you might be able to contain the Zoo. And also Zoo can whiff. Sometimes Zoo misses the one drop, misses the two drop, uh, or just doesn't have enough follow-up. But uh, looking at uh, Oskaka's hand, I, I think like it's okay for now at least. Yeah, I think it's really good. Um, I think the Peddler is really nice because the second you play the Peddler, you have potential of Power of Whelming or an Abuse of Sergeant, which means that the you know you can deal with the bigger minions that the Druid's going to drop, like the Druid of the Claw come turn 5, or even just trading up with a token into a Shredder or something like that. So he's got an okay start. As we can see from Tyce, though, with Double Wrath, he can keep a handle on the early game if he really needs to. Like, say he saw like Voidwalker or Peddler and then... Uh, uh, you know, a juggler or something, you know, he can keep keep a hold of it. And he does have the shade as well, something a bit early to play. But Tice is probably definitely where I want to look at getting some ramping pretty quick so he can get that Dr. Boom as, as quick as possible. Absolutely. Oskaka decides to go for the Dark Peddler instead of just uh, slamming the Voidwalker. Uh, Voidwalker might be a bit slow. That's why it said also it's a, an okay start because normally you want to have Flame Imp in the very beginning. Yeah, and the, the bonus here is, is that like, he's used coin, but the peddler actually allows him now because he already had a void wall. He could potentially play two one drops next turn. So he still fills out his curve, and it's not like he's coin in and then doesn't really have anything good to do next turn, like just the Void Walker for one mana and then pass. So he does keep his uh, his curve pretty full there, and Tice is going to answer this first Dark Peddler with the uh, Wrath, which is going to be pretty nice. And now drawing to the Shredder, he can just go Shade, uh, shade Shredder, which is going to put on a pretty reasonable board for Oskaka to try and deal with. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, really good for Tais, where he will be able to play some minions that uh, do something at least. Um, and Oskaka, I think a bit slowish, you know, um, losing that Dark Peddler to the Wrath and now having a Haunted Creeper is not a lot of pressure for now. Yeah, and, and the, so the benefit of playing Haunted Creeper this turn is that you've seen Wrath, and then also Haunted Creeper, you know, is pretty good against removal because it just spawns two tokens. And I think at this point, Tice can quite comfortably just drop the shade down. Uh, Haunted Creeper is only poking for one damage at the moment per turn. Uh, Wrath in it would actually make you get hit for two next turn and generate two tokens. So the shade's pretty nice, and Tice is even drawn into another shade. So I'm not sure quite when he's going to squeeze that in, but it might help fill out his turn five with, say, Shade Wrath or Shade Hero Power. Yeah, absolutely. But then uh, we have a, a really nice job for Skaka being a knife juggler that can be protected by the Voidwalker, which will in turn allow an implosion on four. So uh, if he goes for that play, he can position himself really well or even 
uh, maybe block turn 4 from Thais, where he will prioritize roughing the juggler, expecting something like uh, Implosion being played. Yeah, Oskak is probably uh, really wanting a Power of Alarming or something now. Like, if you wanted to push in with the Creeper, Power of Alarming, then play the Juggler and Voidwalker and try and juggle out the uh, the Shade. You know, it's like sort of a, not maybe an all in play, but he did get the Voidwalker from the Peddler and not a Power of Alarming, so. This creeper is not going to be able to kill itself this turn, but you are right. The juggler into Void Walker seems okay, but he might not want to just run into a swipe, uh, where swiping the juggler is pretty important, and then uh, you know the Void Walker and the creeper, as we said before, aren't major threats. Yeah, but even with the swipe, I think um, swipe is not that powerful this turn. If you swipe this board, you don't kill. Like you only kill the knife juggler, so it even would be better to just rough it. But uh, now the big decision, uh, he got the Wild Grove, so that might actually change his play. Without the Wild Grove, just roughing the, the juggler and then attacking with the Shade into the one free and hero powering wouldn't be that much. Like, I would probably not even attack with the with the Shade for now. But uh, now he has an alternative to playing Pilot Shredder. Like, Pilot Shredder is still an okay card to play. It's a big minion. It uh, If there is an implosion, you, you might be in trouble. But if there is no implosion, it's a, it's a great minion to have and start fighting back for the board. But now you also can limit the board with the Wrath and Wild Grove. Yeah, I think regarding the Shade, I think the attack on the Shade's nice because it still puts you out of range of the Creeper. And also on turn 4, uh, if Defender of Argus came down, then things are, you know, like a little bit more worrying because that Voidwalker becomes a 2-4, uh, the Creeper becomes a 2-3 still with the death rattle and they have taunt so that makes it a little bit more awkward so i wouldn't be too um too disappointed if tice went into wrath and then did choose to attack and then use the wild growth as you said i think i like not attacking because uh zoo can mostly buff the minions where well, there's a lot of ways abusive dark iron dwarf dire wolf defender of argus so uh with keeping the shade hidden for now there is not that much damage on board there's only two two points of damage uh, upcoming at the moment which is nothing and if your shade grows to something like a five five or or a six six it will be able to kill a dark iron dwarf or a gormog on board so uh yeah that's true actually yeah it does um hold off and if tice like you said it doesn't feel under too much threat i mean he's on 28 on to what on and he's on five mana as uh, against Zoo, so Tice is doing pretty okay so far, and um, none of Voskaka's cards really feel great. I mean, he could just sort of tap and then just splurge like the Direwolf on just to push for some more damage. Um, that seems okay. He could just play Gormok as a four drop and just hope you know Tice doesn't have a swipe or something. Uh, but that might feel a little bit too risky. I think Void Walker and Dire Wolf is not terrible. Uh, you are floating one mana, but you are able to deal uh, extra damage with the with the Wolf, and uh, you play another card that's uh, resistant to swipe. Yeah, that's true. That's going to be very awkward, and he should. Uh... Okay, he's done. I didn't know if he was going to drop the Void Walker next to the Dire Wolf between the Creeper, you know, so the you know the taunted minion has an additional buff then. Um, but he has chose to drop it on the far side. It's uh, probably it was... because uh, he will, at some point, he will want to, to have the Creeper dead, and then you want to have spiders on the left side of the of the Dire Wolf and not uh, Void Walker blocking that. Yeah, that's true, actually. And I suppose the bonus is the, uh, the Void Walker that's... Um, you know, one of those Void Walkers is going to die, right? So if one dies, then the other one still has the buff regardless, and it's the two taunted minions. Yeah. Alright, and uh, back to Tice. Now the Shredder looks um, okay still. Uh, the big, the question is, do you, do you use the Shade? You cannot really reach the Direwolf Alpha with the hand you have at the moment. Hmm. Mm. I, I, I like... To, to be honest, I think Shredder Hero Power is fine because they're both pretty chunky minions and as long as you represent this much damage on the board and then he's going to drop Dr. Boom next turn, you like, if, if Oskaka uses you know some creatures or some removal on these minions, then he follows up with Boom, then it's going to really struggle to deal with that 7-7. Uh, but this opens a Gormok turn because Oskaka can attack with the spider first and then he will have four minions and Gormok will be activated. So he can deal 4 damage to one of the targets. This will actually open a swipe next turn for Thais, because he will have the 1-1 one -one spiders and Gormok, which is uh, for, for health, so... It's a tough one, because what, what do you... It's really awkward, though, because if you attack in with the Creeper, regardless of what you attack into, you end up having to throw another minion in, unless you want to Gormok for 1, effectively. So uh, that's a little bit of a rough one, because he doesn't really want to throw the Dival for the Voidwalker. Um, Hmm. Maybe he could. Uh... 
I wouldn't hate attacking with the Haunted Creeper into Piloted Shredder to deal 2 damage to it and then playing Gormok to kill the Shade and go face with the rest of the minions because this um, creates a situation where a Shredder will die to Void Walker, whatever happens. Yeah, yeah, completely. I, I quite like that. Um, he is going for the Silence play though, actually. So that's a, definitely an interesting one. I suppose what he's doing now is uh, maybe setting Gormok up the next turn. Because um, now with the egg and the creeper on the board, the odds on Tice actually being able to clear everything is you know pretty slim. Yeah, and it's also really plays around swipe because still this board like how do you even swipe this board? You you, you have to swipe the two two, and it's uh, I guess it's still okay. But if you would attack and play Gormok, then you're really weak to swipe. Yeah, and I think one of the issues as well like if if he did swipe this board because it doesn't feel great, it's not an amazing swipe. Then you only have three mana. And it's like that that greatly reduces the potential of the druid when they only have three mana to play around with and there's still minions on the board on their opponent's side. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And now Tys is in a weird <laughs> spot where you really want to play Dr. Boom, but you also want to kill the Dire Wolf Alpha. So you cannot do the, those two things at the same time. Uh, he might go for the Shade, Hero Power and Living Roots. That's uh, an option. Like. Um, Living Roots the 2-2, Hero Power into the 1-1 the Void Walker, and then uh, attack into the Owl, but he decides that Dr. Boom gives him the best chance to come back. Yeah, I mean, I think Dr. Boom's okay here. It puts so much on the board, and now suddenly if uh, Oskaka wants to deal with Boom, we can see that he does have Gorm up, which yeah. is pretty reasonable and to deal 4, and it only requires 3, and that Owl's sitting, pre sitting pretty nice on a, as a 3-1 attack here. Which then means the egg can attack, so I think uh, Gormok using the owl into the boom and then using the egg into uh, the uh, the shredder could be pretty reasonable here. Depends where he plays the Gormok, obviously, but uh, yeah, he finds a good spot. Um, if the spider dies and uh, all the tokens die from the spider as well, uh, he will be he will be buffed. So a really good turn for Oskaka. <laughs> Lightwell will not really helping Tais much. <laughs> You'll stay alive a little bit longer. And this is the value of the Zoo deck. We're seeing exactly why. I mean, Zoo lines up well versus Druid, but we're seeing what this Zoo deck does and why a lot of the pros are playing it. Um, I mean, it's just consistent value every single turn. Like, is it, it really is crazy how much uh, how much use he's getting of these minions. I mean, that wolf just has been on the board forever. So is the Creeper. Um, doing so much work, and then when it dies, it's going to spawn more tokens to actually attack with, and there's not a lot Tice can really do about this board in general. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really tough. So let's let's see what are the options. Like, he can use Savage Roar to buff um, the, the useless minions that are on board right now, and uh, with that, it's still not great. <laughs> yeah, do, do you like living roots for damage to the dog? Run the bomb into the 2-1 to try and snipe a 4-4, play Druid of the Claw, and then Hero Power other tokens that comes out of the Creeper. That's an option, but you are reliant on the bomb to do some work. So it is going with the Savage Roar. Yeah, it needs to see where the bomb lands. That was pretty good for Thais. He got re like Obviously, killing Gormok with a bomb would be better, but that was still as good as, um, as he got, because right now he can... Uh, he still has 4 power on board, so he can kill the Wolf, and he can kill this. Well, killing spider is probably not good for him. Um, so probably going for phase and uh, having a four six taunt. Yeah, that's going to be pretty good. I'd, yeah, you got to get the wolf off the table. I think. Oh, he's going for the four four. Okay. Okay, it might be a bit better. That was more power, and the wolf is not doing that much at the moment. Yeah, I, that's that's one of the things. Like, I'm I'm looking at that wolf, thinking you've been on the board for so long. <laughs> But, you know, uh, doing so much additional damage. But I suppose when there's no, no minions on one side, there's only a Doom Guard that's really going to instantly benefit from that wolf on that side anyway. So, probably feeling pretty good. Removes the 4 form, puts a bit of a big taunt up Frostgacker to deal with. But there's still options. I mean, Dark Iron Dwarf, again, with a big trade up value for an additional 2. But you won't then have the mana to Implosion. So, do you like Dark Iron Dwarf and run the 2 2 in as well, the, the wolf? Or do you think we have to roll for an implosion here and hope? I think I think it's actually fine to get Dark Iron Dwarf and uh, Imp Gang Boss. That will be a really solid board, and you still get the spiders back. So Dark Iron Dwarf on whatever target, you, you kill the 4-6, and then you get the Imp Gang Boss. Yeah, this is really nice, because if, if the Dark Iron Dwarf was like on its own with the Creeper tokens, then 
Even then, it's just as vulnerable to swipe as an implosion would be. Um, but with the inclusion of the gang boss uh, slipping in there, then, it, like you said, you know, it's, it's so resistant still. And Oskaka is still holding on to this implosion, so this Ancient of Law is probably going to get uh, killed by a multitude of imps next turn. Absolutely. There is a swipe, though, so there will be something to, to fight back. And the Ancient of Law was really needed for, for Tyus to, to even have a chance. Like, he's still not that low. He, he is at 20. There's only 7 damage on board at the moment. Oskaka will still continue fighting, but there is the juggler that can be combined with oh. that implosion. That's pretty huge, especially because he's got Voidwalker as well. Um, I was going to say the hero power onto the 1-1 token was nice because it sort of demands a 4-hit implosion from Oskaka. Um, or else he'll have to trade a minion as well. But suddenly, you know, knife juggler... Implosions feels pretty nice. Next turn, he can play Voidwalker, Doomguard, and you just start to think, how can the Druid deal with so many mid-range minions? Yeah, absolutely. And now, um, attacking first to, to free the space on board for a four implosion if he gets it, and he gets a four. Oh my of God. course, it's implosion That's with four. That card just read effectively with the Juggler, deal four damage, summon four tokens, do four more damage to face. <laughs> like it's so insane comboing it with Juggler. Well, Tynes have a way to clear this board, right? How much mana is that? So if he uses Keeper to deal 2 damage to... Like, do you even want to Keeper? You basically want to damage the Imp Gang boss um, to have 1 health, so that it dies to swipe. And it will not produce Imps because the board is full. And then you swipe the board, swiping the 4-4, four, four, and, you, and you need to deal 1 damage to Knife Juggler somehow. Yeah, it's a tough one. There is an option where you could keep of the Grove for 2, and then... Uh, living roots for two and then swipe so that there's only a three one juggler alive and uh you know leaving the juggler up never feels good but yeah i suppose you're either picking between the juggler and the gang boss here hmm. with two minions in well two cards in hand from Skaka. You might, you might actually swipe the juggler as well and just leave the four four like it really depends uh, what produces more damage yeah, I think what's scary is although Oskaka's got two cards, it's effectively four next turn. Um, because he can draw and tap. As, as, because this dex curve is so low, you can often tap like almost every turn after, say, turn six. Yeah. And still play a good chunk of your cards because they're all so low mana. So uh, he has gone with leaving the gang boss up and putting the shade on the board, which is actually pretty nice. It actually you know, gets something it's on there over. that's going to do some work. But suddenly... Suddenly. So Defender, of Argus, <laughs> Defender of Argus was this one uh, last damage that the Skaka needed, and uh, that put Tyson in a really close range. So with the Doomguard, the Skaka is taking that game, and uh, now Zoo on and Zoo on. Yeah, it's um, honestly, I just I think that deck's amazing, and obviously the Zoo is going to win the Zoo Mirror, um, and then you know Skaka got a really good lineup there against the Jury, but both Zoo decks are gone now, and um, what have the guys got left? Uh, Tyson has his druid still and his paladin and Oskaka has his rogue and his warrior so um do you think Oskaka is actually looking better in terms of lineup here rogue and warrior versus druid and uh and paladin, paladin. yeah mm. i i believe so absolutely because paladin will be weak to both rogue and warrior if that warrior is a patron and i I do not imagine Oskaka playing a different deck than Patron Warrior. <laughs> Oskaka mind games us all and brings Control Warrior, Arena Warrior. Face Warrior. <laughs> yeah, Face Warrior. Weapon Warrior. Brilliant. He's taking, making use of that death fight before it disappears. Absolutely. Just having fun with it for the last time. <laughs> so Tice has got a pretty, pretty decent Druid start here. He has the ramp. He has the living roots uh, for like the early stuff, the wrath for any, you know, crazy removal, but I normally like to see wrath held for a patron. Because it's just so it's two mana killer patron, right? So that's really nice. Um and on the other hand, Oskaka, the two Dread Corsairs are okay, but versus Druid, you definitely want that death bite early as possible. Well, he still has has a chance to get it at some point. And uh, he needs some cards as well, like he will be able to draw with Slam. But for now, it, uh, the hand looks a bit slow. Like, the Dread Corsairs will be nice next turn. Like, he will be able to play them uh, for one mana. Uh, but still, he need, he will need cards. And uh, Thais is uh, getting that Shredder again. So, really good uh, drawer. Uh, I was thinking that sometimes Druid has, has only spells. Like, you do not draw into minions. You get those Force of uh, force of Nature, Savage Roar. Where you ramp into nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
this is oh so uh, Skaka picking up the acolyte of pain is actually pretty good. So now we can slam it the next minion that gets played by Tice or do acolyte of pain whirlwind or something. So he has options now because without that, uh, you know the the warrior running low on card draw when they don't have the key cards like Despite already in hand is a real real problem. But you know the acolyte of pain is definitely going to help with that. And now Tice has a few options. He could Wild Growth, Wrath down one of the 3-3s three pass, uh, just to ramp a bit more. He could just drop the Shredder, which we can see now. Just, just go drop the Shredder and say, okay, just, just deal with this. But with all the kinds of 3 damage you could ever want, with two minions and a weapon, Oskaka's going to be able to clear up this Shredder pretty nicely. Yeah, absolutely. Having uh, Attacking the Shredder first to save his minion. Let's see what we get. That's um, Mech Warper, which is a target that can easily die. Uh, to one of those minions, and uh, Oskaka starting to pressure, and this this matchup overall is good for the warrior because uh, warrior has a lot of tools to deal with whatever Druid is being uh, is playing, and also has this ultimate strategy of um, exploding with patrons that uh, can be answered most of the times by the Druid player. Yeah, do you do you like the wrath on the acolyte here because the warrior's cards are so low? Can you just uh, living roots and attack into acolyte maybe? Or, or just uh, leave the Acolyte alone. I, I would probably attack into Acolyte. But on the other hand, you really want Shade versus Patron. So it's a, it's a tough decision. Yeah, it's really rough. And now we do see Living Roots is going to come down. And uh, it's, like it's going to be Living Roots Hero Power. Um, I doubt. Are we going to see Innovate Wild Growth? I very much doubt it. There's nothing to Wild Growth into at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to keep inner Innovate for... So like, in, if you innervate Wild Group, you have 6 mana. Now you probably won't innervate for something like uh, a combo earlier, or maybe if you get Ancient of Lore by turn 6, 7, um, you will be able to innervate something you need. Yep. And Oskaka drawing into Belcher seems pretty nice, as his other two cards just weren't going to cut it, unless he wants to just slam his own Acolyte to draw 2. But you can do it. Slam's actually really nice versus Druid, because they have quite a few high health minions and slam as well as drawing a card really helps either you know proc and execute quite easily or actually just lower the health enough to be able to trade better yeah so slam is a very flexible card and um, i think dropping the belcher there was a good decision as well like even if the shade kills it you're still fine with that because you can kill the shade with your weapon so you get um get rid of it and uh you, you continue pressuring even, you know, sometimes everybody thinks about patrons and the patron deck, that this is the key strategy. But if the if the, if the patron deck is pressuring enough, maybe he can just win with Dr. Boom into Grommage and never see a patron. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Oskaka definitely had that start with the double dread course there, where, you know, that's a, you know, two, two three threes for one mana each, pretty reasonable, uh, as well as the weapon for the removals, pretty nice. And this is actually pushing Tice into using a force of nature to clear this up and actually guard his shape. Yeah, and he's still taking some damage while doing it because uh, he's taking two from from Belcher effectively after hero power, using Innervate as well. And now will he attack the shade? No, he's keeping the shade for a possible patron turn. Like you always have to expect the patrons to happen at some point in the game. So Skaka going for the slam on Acolyte to draw those cards. Two cards. Yeah, I think at this point, why not, right? Yeah, yeah. You need something. You need more pressure. And this is not Doctor Boom turn yet. Like you know, you play Doctor Boom on next turn. But this turn you want to pressure a bit. Now decision, do you go face with the weapon and, and replay Fire War Axe? Because you know the next turn you're playing Dr. Boom. So you might yeah. want to have a weapon equipped for that. Yeah, I think actually equipping the Death Bite is fine actually after, after the attack with the weapon. Because oh, yeah. like, you, like you said, he's going to drop Dr. Boom. And I just no one's really playing like Harrison at the moment. Unless, you know, this is this is where I say this and then ties to Tom Harrison. <laughs> but, uh, but you know what I mean? Like, no one's really... There was a point in Hearthstone where everyone was bringing Harrison. Um, whereas it's not too common anymore. So I think it's safe to just lock that up because you have the guaranteed turn 7. And, you know, having... And this is where we see the power of Despite versus Druid. Like, oh, Azure Drake, it's dead next turn. 100% done. <laughs> you know, finished. Absolutely. I like how patient Tys is with the shade. He's just waiting for a patron turn or just preparing himself to win with this uh, Force of Nature Savage Roar. Because Force of Nature Savage Roar suddenly with the shade will be, well, not this turn, but let's say in two turns, shade will be at 8, uh, 8, 8, 8. So plus 2, 10, uh, 24 points of damage on turn 9 with the, that, with the Savage Roar. That's definitely scary. Oh, there's no swipe now as well. Yeah, but he has a uh, big hunter, so he's in a good sh uh, good spot anyway. But actually, yeah, I'm I'm just thinking whether you can actually. Hmm, How much damage is he? He can right? swipe. He can swipe wrath. Um, 
Hmm. He's looking for a oh, at this point. Yeah, he's actually just going to draw to try oh, and get. Oh man, he got it. He did it again, then. He's looking for the salary. There it is. <laughs> um, so this is going to be very, very scary. And this is one of the issues Patron Warrior has. If it doesn't throw the patrons down, then although Oskaka's done a good job of pressuring and you know get that Doctor Boom down, but there's never been a push for Tice to pull out the shade. And even though it's on two health. Ooh. Yeah. You have to attack, right? Well, I think you do have to attack here because you see one world effect on board and there's a big chance there's another one. Even though you you, you will have lethal next turn if the shade survives. But if it doesn't, it didn't do anything. So Tyus make, uh, makes a good read, a good yeah. call to attack. And I the think shade. the thing as well is because the minion he has next to the shade also has two health, his whole board gets blown out by double whirlwind effects. So if it was like Druid of the Claw or something like, you know, a bit beefier, then maybe you think, okay, well, if I don't attack, he does still has to attack into one of my minions instead. But then there's the threat of Execute, so Ty is really good getting that 7 damage out and uh, and setting up for his combo. And Oskaka has to clear whilst gaining some life here. He is one off lethal from just the combo alone, uh, but you kind of want to be a little bit more than one off lethal if, if possible. Yeah, absolutely, especially with addition of Living Roots, uh, where combo suddenly becomes, um, you know, even an Inner Vid. Like, Inner Vid makes the combo fif no. at, at 15, right? And Living Roots uh, makes the combo 16. So um, it's a tough it's a tough moment. But uh, Oskaka is missing the, those key cards, like the pressure cards. He didn't get those patrons. He doesn't have any draw at the moment. So he needs to find a way to protect himself while um, pressuring still. Yeah, it's going to be really rough. Uh, the Whirlwind's going to be nice. Uh, do you think... Hmm. See, is he going to... Yeah, he's going to He's going to attack face it. He could have played just the other Whirlwind and saved the weapon. Um, because, you know, he, he has... The weapon's not going to do too much when you just attack face. I suppose it does open up the, uh, the ability to just lock in the second Fire War Act. So that's actually pretty good for Moskaka. Just uh, optimizing the amount of damage. So if he does draw Grom next turn, he has Cruel Task uh, the following turn into Grom. Absolutely. Oh man, and Tyus has a second Savage Roar. If he doesn't innervate, this can uh, get ugly really fast. Like, he has a lot of damage in hand, but he will need more mana and more time to, to finish Oskaka. But if Oskaka doesn't make a really decisive move, then uh, Tyus will be able to, to steal this game in, in two next turns. But there's the Battle Rage for Skaka. Yeah, I think... Uh, I mean, this seems okay for now, because you can just Cruel Task Execute to remove that. Um, I def definitely think you just Battle Rage first, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. You just need to... There's going? so much mana. Hmm. Well, it's kind of natural that you want to Cruel Task ex Execute to get rid of the 5-5. Five -five. But um, can he actually, like, using Whirlwinds to get a one more card from Battle Rage mm, will be interesting. But then, like, Ostkaka is one of the best players in the world with this deck. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like, hmm, should we argue? Uh, I think the thought, if he Whirlwinds, is because at this point, our patron's actually going to win him this game. You know, whereas stabilizing and drawing additional cards and hopefully drawing to that Grom is going to be way more impactful. Then uh, you know, the, then just dropping a patron, then waiting for the patrons to wind up. So uh, he's putting on a lot of pressure here. Removes the five four off the board with that execute, and he has inner rage as well. So the second Oskaka draws Grom, things are going to get very scary. Yeah, I think like I, I didn't um, really realize how how much he's getting with that uh, with that with throwing away in uh, whirlwind because not only he gained a bit more uh, gained a bit more health, he was able to draw that one more card, which will be important for him. And uh, putting uh, Thais into the uh, Grom range. So he achieved like three different things with that play he did. Yeah, it's a really strong play from Oskaka. And Thais now just dropping the low theb to make sure nothing too crazy happens with the cards that are going to come out from that uh, battle rage. And Oskaka drawing into a death spite now. So does he just death spite face and then armor up? Uh, he can also death by Lothab and kill it with Inner Rage, and uh, he'll not be able to armor up, so it's like really cutting it really close <laughs> overall. Hmm. So if he armors up, he's on what 22? Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's one off lethal either way, right? If he armors up, it'll be 21 with the Lothab for the combo. So Lothab, yeah, combo and Lothab is 21. 
precisely, right? So if he armors yeah. up, he's he's safe from the just combo and low thub. And uh, he will not be safe with uh, from Innervate with the combo and Lothab. He will not be yeah. safe with Living Roots. But he's seen one Living Roots before. And I think he's seen Innervate as well. So there's still one more Innervate in the deck. And possibly no other Living Roots because uh, it's mostly a one-off. Yeah, and this is probably a little bit uh, frustrating for Skaka that even though he is attacking and this game's extremely close, um, but it means like he isn't presenting lethal to Ty's next turn unless he draws something. Uh, Druid of the Claw is going to be pretty nice, actually. He's seen Execute now, um, or he's seen one of them at least. So Druid of the Claw in Taunt mode is going to feel pretty good. And it's just, you know, having the Lothar push for five, then feel pretty safe after that, is going to be pretty nice. How much damage is it overall with uh, Savage is 4, so it's 12, 70, <laughs> okay. I just like, sometimes when you when you have this awkward hand, you have to count damage uh, anyway. Like, is double Savage or a lethal suddenly, right? Like, with Druid mm -hmm. of the Claw, he, not, he cannot cast it, but double Savage and Swipe is not enough. Uh, yeah, do, do you think just Druid of the Claw taunt Swipe what? face is reasonable here? Or even maybe just one of the Savage draws with hero power? Because you, you're just pushing the warrior low and... Five or six health, like, yeah, the Savage Raw is going to come down. This is pretty nice. Yeah, Pushes right. a lot of damage, and then it's not like, how what cards does Oskaka need to actually push through this? He needs, like, in a rage, execute Ron to win, right? That's yeah, the absolutely. only that's the only hour, I think. You, may, you, you have to make sure that you're actually getting through this um, for this wall. Uh, right now, if he goes Fuck Light, he'll not be able to play Grom anymore. So uh, it's it's really tough, and uh, he got those patrons eventually with Inner Rage and, and Death Spite, but this is too late. Yeah, does sad. he have to like acolyte Inner Rage, hope for an armor smith, uh, and then attack, and then hope for an execute? Is that even enough? Probably not. Well, at this point, he might just assume that um, he's dead to combo, so he has to assume there is no combo in hand and make the best play based on the. The assumption there is no combo. Yeah, it's really crazy how uh, how close this match is, um, and and how close it becomes when you sort of remove patrons from the equation a little bit. Because ev when everyone thinks of patron, in terms of playing like in a match, it's always despite turn four, patron in a rage, whirlwind effect turn five, and then you always think, oh god, you know, like how do you come back? How do you deal with that? But you know what? Sometimes they don't draw patron. And, uh, and, and it, they can, it can really have a hard time if you can't pressure quite enough without it. And I think mainly just not having Grom combined with not having patrons has, has been really rough for Skaka this game. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, those patrons late game just did nothing, as you said. So Tice is taking game number three uh, with his Druid deck. The last deck for Tice is Paladin. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what type of Paladin it take, uh, he's bringing. I mean, I think we've only seen Secret Paladin so far in this tournament. and. You know, pretty understandable since it's uh, by far the best Paladin deck at the moment. Uh, kind of interesting that like no one's like bringing or we've not seen mid-range Paladin for such a long time. Yeah, we haven't seen it. But you know, on the other hand, yesterday Paladin was the deck that was the demise of Orange and Strife Crow in, uh, in matches versus the show, where he was just winning 3-0 uh, versus their Paladin decks. Yeah, it was actually pretty crazy, wasn't it? I think Show's lineup did pretty well versus Paladin overall. So, um, you know, really punishing that. But we do see it is Secret Paladin from Tice, and it looks like Oskaka's pretty rightly locked in his uh, best deck versus Secret Paladin, which will be his, his yeah. uh, Patron Warrior. Patron Warrior having all the good effects that clear the board and having a, an answer for Mistress Challenger. But on the other hand, we've seen Secret Paladin winning that matchup as well. If, if there is a really good carry from Secret Paladin, 2-3-4, uh, pressure, really pressure into a situation where Mistress Challenger is unanswered, there is no execute for him. Uh, Secret Paladin can take this game as well, so it will depend on what Oskaka can get, how fast can he get the patrons, can he draw the cards, so this will be an interesting game for sure. Yeah, and having that ghoul is actually really nice, as it, you know, it pretty much just locks out a lot of the early stuff from Secret Paladin, you know, especially Muster. Uh, you just drop the ghoul and it's like, well, there's no real way to clear this unless you like run a silence or something and, you know, reduce the uh, the whirlwind effect effectively. So, you know, pretty good there from Oskaka. Drawing now into the fire war axe means he can actually just remove this mini bot, which is pretty nice. Run the armsmith in, lock the fire war axe in and then take it straight off the board before anything starts funky starts to happen with like noble sacrifice, avenge, redemptions, all those annoying little things. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you might want to do it because of the cog hammer as well. Um, 
but uh, he is thinking about this uh, Master for Battle, as you said, uh, which actually just came to Tice's hand. Yeah, so now I guess the option is to hit Coghammer hit, and then you have the 2 2 ton unharmed. Yeah, and you keep the weapon as well for a couple of yeah. next turns, so uh, it's pretty reasonable for Tice. Yeah, it's kind of awkward, isn't it? Because Oskaka could have either played around Coghammer or preemptively blocked out Buster, which he did. So, but for, you know, when Tice is rocking both three drops, it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, there, there's no good answer here when uh, there's both options available to play around. And now uh, he got the Frolling Berserker, but he probably wants to deal with the 2 2 first before it uh, threatens the Armorsmith. So, Fireworks off curve might be the best play here and go for face with the Armorsmith. Yeah, and the thing is, like, the, just the tempo gain from having that weapon equipped the next turn as well uh, is really nice. And uh, we might well see uh, potentially Froth in next turn, but he does have the op so option to, like, slam execute anything that annoying that comes out if he really wants to slow the piling down. But Ty's pretty straight up turn, normally on turn four when you're not under too much pressure. And even sometimes when you are, Pilot Tread is the answer. Yeah, absolutely, because even if it dies, it still uh, deals 4 damage to Ostkaka, and the minion can be really good. Yesterday we've seen double Succubus from uh, from both Shredders. Yeah, uh, that was insane. The and then the Flame Tongue Totem. And Vitality Totem at some point as well, so we had some crazy Shredders in this tournament, Raven. Yeah, are you going to miss the Shredders, Nymph? I will miss the Shredder. Honestly, yeah, I think I, like it, I think in some sadistic way I'm gonna miss them as well. <laughs> just just for silly things to happen. Even even this from Tice on you know a bit lower down the scale of true craziness, but even like a taunt coming out with Shredder can actually really change the game. I would I will miss it because whenever when did you see the Frostwolf Ground like the last time? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Maybe in standard Frostwolf Ground will be a good card. Maybe Possibly, uh, two, two <laughs> suddenly because everything is getting nerfed to brown. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Please, no one quote me on that and then come back in a few months and go, Raven said Frostwolf Front was going to be good. It actually, was a joke, guys. You know, if Bolster becomes playable in Warrior, then maybe Frostwolf Ground will actually be a playable card. Maybe. We'll see. That's Nimsh's call for standard everyone. <laughs> you can go back to him in a few months and tell him that. <laughs> new new war Warrior deck will be fun. Yeah, then she's piloting bolster. Um, pretty straightforward turn there from Oskaka, not doing too much. Doesn't want to just put the Berserker down when there's you know an insta kill there already on the board for it. And uh, now Tice has got you know a flurry of secrets and kind of weird though because normally on turn uh, four or five, depending on who you went first uh, versus the warrior, it's really nice to get Repentance down because it just locks out Patron. But with no Death Bite in hand, you don't really feel any pressure to pay, uh, play Repentance. Whereas if Tice draws Death Bite now and then plays it, then like, I think we'll almost certainly, uh, sorry, if Oskaka draws it, we'll almost certainly see the Repentance from Tice because you just say, you have to play something else that isn't a Patron or you will almost certainly just lose. Well, we know that uh, Tice didn't play the Repentance, but Oskaka doesn't. So, you know, this is turn 5, this is his turn. He might be thinking, oh man, there is a Repentance for sure. <laughs> I can't do anything about it. Am I brave yeah. enough to test it? Yeah, and to be honest, this is this is one of the uh, interesting things about like uh, decks that run you know multiple secrets. It's maybe less so in, say, like the Freeze Mage, Tempo Mage. Because a lot of you know, a lot of the time it's mirror entity or then ice block ice barrier. But in that like secret piled in at the moment, there's you know, like it's only just one of like the repentance, even like a redemption early on when you go like secret mini bot, it's like great. If it's noble sacrifice, I'm gonna get tanked by the get down. If it's redemption, I'm gonna kill it after hit it twice and kill it. And then it comes back as a 2-1 Divine Shield. So there's a, there's a lot to really try and play around. And Oskaka's just gone for the Green Patron. Oh, wow. man, that was brave. And that's actually working for him um, twofold. First, it's a, a really good play that gives him two minions. And I think there is no good way for Thais to kill the free free Patron at the moment. The second thing is that it actually limits the power of Divine Favor in Thais's hand. Yeah, I think Oskaka... Uh definitely got rewarded for that slightly risky play. I mean, you know, you can't play around something too much because then you'll just lose the game for being too, you know, too uh, conservative. But, he, you know, he did uh, he did get the most out of that slight risk. And as you said, he can't really deal with this patron. But I think what's nice is that if patron attacks into these tutus, then it, there's still going to just be a... Uh, a 3-1 a and a 3-3. So, you know, he can then follow up and quite easily deal with that one. 
Yeah, but still there's uh, there uh, certain problems. I think for Dice, the, the Lotha that he picked up was really good, blocking the Execute and Slam for Skaka. Now uh, the open play for him is uh, double throttling maybe, just test for the for the secrets. And then uh, he wants to attack into a minion because whatever he gets, he will get that extra patron. But then Lotha will provide Dice with a way to deal with the with the free free patron and, and lock them for now. Yeah, and the thing is as well, like you said about Lotha, it, that could have locked out, you know, Whirlwind in a Rage. Or something which which would have locked this game out pretty hard. Yeah. So a uh, really nice pickup, like you said, and really good for Ties to play that. And Divine Favor being the only card in hand, normally it feels good versus a Patron Warrior, but Oscar are only rocking two cards at the moment. That was a really good advantage for Ties. If that will end up landing on Lotha, like Lotha still had to attack into the free free, so it wouldn't affect Oscar that much. But uh, landing on the on the token on the dude means that now Ties will be able to kill one of the four fours, actually both yeah. of them. Yeah, well, unless a weapon comes out, you can set up everything to uh, just leave the 3-1 up, and then that attacks in and, um, and dies to the get down. So, pretty reasonable. And now we can even play the juggler, which, uh, you know, you can even snipe that 3-1 off and, uh, and guard you 2-1. Uh, what is the secret, by the way, because I missed it? Uh, the secret is a noble sacrifice. Oh, okay. What's interesting there is, did, did Tice just mess up? Oh no, because he, he valued the low theb over the extra damage to face. Yeah, just yeah. the ordering of killing the frothing. So yeah, that, that was right. Sorry, I was just double checking that there wasn't a slight issue there. Because playing like, you know, sequencing against frothing is very important. Yeah, and even if there is a possible whirlwind that can deal with this board. <laughs> oh man, but Dice is just shaking his head. He knows like, one whirlwind is getting this board out of control. And... Yeah. Uh, there's the like, Skaka still has ways to deal with this board at the moment. Yeah, he's probably more upset as well that typical the turn after Divine Favor is the turn you play Battle Rage. <laughs> Do you execute a 5 1 dude? <laughs> hmm. I. Hmm. <laughs> right? That's an interesting question. Yeah, it's probably really frustrating for Skaka that you just can't slam anything and actually uh, draw a card. So I think because of that, you might execute because you like slam is worth more than execute at the moment because one Skaka has both executes in hand, and also he desperately needs card draw now, or this game is gonna uh, run away with Tice. Yeah, even though Tice is uh, lower because he's at 19 points of health, it's still yeah great for him. Just knife juggler into keeper. Uh, Hopefully for him, one of the knives lands on the 2-2 uh, two -two so that he can finish it up with the weapon. Uh, he can still create one more dude and then go go for face. And the Skaka needs uh, something more. Juggler pretty nice as well. Just uh, making a clean up on that 2-2 two -two really easy whilst keeping the 3-3 three -three on full health. So it's going pretty nice. Even a Consecrate for anything too crazy. And double slam. That's okay. That's some card draw. Maybe he'll get a whirlwind into something uh, to to finish this board off. Uh, he got a dress cursor. That's uh, not great. Now, does he execute the three two? <laughs> oh man, just double dread cursor. All Oskaka wants from these draws is a death spike, probably at this point, just to be able to do something. But this is awful. Frost it is absolutely awful, and Dice has still so many good power cards in the deck. Double Mistress Challenger, Doctor Boom. He has uh, Tyrion in the deck, so a lot of good stuff. And he used uh, he used a lot of secrets as well in the early game. And even though he had so many secret draws on the back of the Divine Favor and Lotha, he was able to not only stabilize but but win the board, and he's in a great position. The Dread Corsair feels so bad right now. Yeah, there's a reason that card has an effect that lowers its cost, because a 4 mana 3-3 three, three taunt is not fantastic. I would and not have paid Oskaka for just armoring up and passing <laughs> the turn. Because <laughs> the 3-1 just runs straight in, and you know, bit of a dead draw for Tice, but you know, you imagine one of these minions is going to die pretty soon, so the avenge going on there is fine. It's whether he chooses to Consecrate and keep the more power on the board, so he could run the 1-1 one, one in, Consecrate, play Avenge, and then, uh, you know, push for 10. I think it's fine to trade because you are expecting this Whirlwind uh, effect to to come really soon. Like, there's still double Whirlwind in the deck. Yeah, and this holds the Consecrate down for, uh, you know, even two additional damage to face. Because yeah. we are getting to the point where Tice is seriously starting to think about how many turns can actually kill our Skaka in. <laughs> Skaka got in a rage and he's like, looking at his face, he's, uh, I think he's thinking, is this a joke? <laughs> Like what is this? Deck? What is this deck? Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel too great for Oskaka here. I mean, he's just nothing 
he, he's not had he's had a lot of good cards, but never the like pairs of cards you want as um as the patron play. He's never really had the you know the the inner rage whirlwind patron all together at the same time. You know he's just never quite got enough. And that, again, we're probably just going to see Dread Corsair. But the issue now is if an execute or inner rage comes down to clear off some minions, it's only going to buff something else. And with two tokens on board, then buffing a token is really powerful for Tice. There is master for battle, so some <laughs> knives can fly. Three juggles to the 3-3, three, three, calling it. <laughs> uh, he can also Consecrate right now and uh, attack with a weapon into the 3-3 three, three and then get three juggles to face. Uh, actually, even... Will he have seven minions? Okay, seven minions. Yeah, do, do you think there's any value in Consecrate, Attack Face, and then just not play Mustard and save Mustard for if your board gets wiped? I and think, then you just refill and push. I think there is value um, in not playing anything actually, because uh, if there is this wind effect coming, you might get punished, and your board can be cleared, and then you have no full up, so you are top decking. And if you keep the Master for Battle in your hand, then you have a chance to to refill. Uh, consecration is probably fine either way. Like th there is nothing really you want to consecrate on, uh, on the opposing side, um, so it's always too damage to face. That's the, the important part. Yep. I mean, I'm gonna see Tice uses face for more damage, which um, you know now he's open to inner rage. Uh, is, oh, Oskak has used an inner rage, right? He still has. He's already used one. Hand. Yeah, I was thinking if he's open to inner rage, inner rage on Grom. For lethal. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he has Noble Sacrifice. Oh, no, it's Avenge, actually. Um, yeah, it's Avenge. But but I think we saw an Inner earlier, I'm not sure. But unfortunately, now Asgaka, Dr. Boom is not going to do too much. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine he is one off. We can see he does have must from three juggles. Well, he can. Uh, what Asgaka can do is play Dr. Boom, execute the free two, and Inner Rage one of the bombs. <laughs> Just to hope to snipe the juggler. <laughs> but All, uh, the, all he... the Avenge buffed. <laughs> Yeah, you need, yeah exactly. you need like Avenge on the juggler and then the boom bot to hit for four on the juggler. That's it. Oh, no. You know, that might be the play. That might be the play. Desperate times call for desperate measures, Raven. Here we go. Oh, it's on the juggler. We got the first pick. <laughs> is he going to dinner age a bomb? He is he casting is. the dinner age. Oh my god, if this hits the juggler, this is insane. Oh, he inner a dude. Boo! <laughs> Come on, world champ, where's that, uh, you know, where's the confidence? I, like, honestly, there was a really low chance. Like, first you need to uh, hit the juggler and then you have to hit the maximum. But so. Nymph, there was a chance. <laughs> there was, there was. Like, yesterday, Shaw had a chance to hit uh, with, with two juggles of the face. And he just did that. He just killed Strife Crow. And the chance was so, also pretty, no, pretty low. There's, so there is potential lethal here. And I think you do just go for it. Um, I'm surprised he's not attacking with the 1-1 one, one first, because the 1-1 one, one gives him lethal, right? It actually survives, because it's still green. Yeah. So the knives are flying. Uh, he really wants to hit face as much as possible. And he can hit okay. for 2, and he's still... So no yep. no more lethal possibility, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Mr. Challenger is the... It's the card. It's way up. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's way up killing the bomb, and I think that's the right play. Um, you just because you got so many tokens and now you're dropping a six six with two secrets on the board, like you know, there's no reason to let the bomb live here. And now you want, uh, I think there's still that second noble sacrifice is one of the secrets. So you want Doctor Boom to run into that and not be able to run a boom button. And Oskaka does concede. Yeah, so this means that Tyson is taking the match with a secret paladin, and that was a pretty good series, even though Oskaka wasn't drawing cards. You know, I feel like the best games are where the players are drawing badly and then they have to make the best out of them to bad draw. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to see how... Because uh, I think it's something a lot of Hearthstone viewers want to see as well because, like we said earlier, it's all good and well, you know, you get Death Spike, turn 4 into Patron in a Rage, turn 5, and you and you win, that's great, but it's like, how do you play this matchup when, like you said, it doesn't... it's not going your way? It's really good to see how uh, these guys uh, perform there and... But, that is actually Ty's taking that set, so you know Ty's probably happy with that win, especially because it is Oskaka. Absolutely. So a really interesting start of the day, guys. So we we started with Group D today, Hearthstone Champions League, ten thousand dollars prize pool. The winner takes five thousand, and we have uh, many more matches today. And uh, the next one upcoming is Hannibal Z two, the winner of Dreamhack Cluj Napoca from Romania, and then Tides of Time. 
uh, from United States. Uh, who is, uh, well, he won a lot. He won a lot. So Tides, a really interesting deck builder and a great tournament player, uh, is going to face Hannibal's. Ostkaka, even though he lost to Tides, he's not eliminated. He's just um, being put into the loser's bracket. And then he will fight the loser of Hannibal's versus Tides of Time, where Tides will have to fight the winner. Two players advance to the uh, top eight playoffs, and two players will get eliminated today. So a lot more good stuff. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Can't wait for the next set, because I'm really looking forward to see uh, some more from Hannibal Z, to be honest. Absolutely. He is a really aggressive player. At least uh, that's uh, what he was playing in DreamHack Bucharest. But we will talk about it in just a moment, guys. So give us a short time for a short break. Uh, we'll be back soon. <laughs> 